Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R650 server. In this video, we're gonna specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R650 server. Do us a favor, find anything that helps in this video. Click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, top in now, this video is gonna be specifically dedicated to memory. So what we're gonna do in this video as a whole, we're gonna go over the different speeds, the different sizes, the different types to let you know what is compatible with the R650 server. And if you have any questions, I definitely recommend checking out our website. It has a page dedicated to the R650 uh, for memory options. It's gonna let you know all the different types and sizes and show you pricing as well. So it's a very, very good resource just to let you know know uh, what you can find for the 650 server. And then what we're going to do at the very, very end is we're going to show you how to actually install them, which is really important if you're not maxing it out and you're not filling up all 32 DIMM slots. Where do I put my DIMMs? That's one of the things that we're going to show you. So let's hop into the good stuff. So one of the things that I did mention, there are 32 DIMM slots in the R650. There are two CPUs inside, which means that each CPU controls 16 DIMM slots. And we'll show you a little bit more about the channels as we get in there. Uh, there are a number of different speeds you can use. If you go to the Dell spec sheet, it's going to tell you 26 66, 2933, and 3200, all of which are uh, approved, all of which will work. We did a playing around uh, this morning just to test it out, and we put in some 2133s and some 2400s, and both of them worked just fine. Now, I can't say this across the board for every single CPU out there. We did try it with silvers and with golds. We didn't get to test it with uh, any platinums because we were on a time crunch, but the 2133s and the 2400s worked just fine. So that's one thing that I did want to note because if you're looking to uh, save a little bit and uh, not pay for the faster speed, you can save a little bit and go with the 2133 or the 2400. So that's something that might be helpful for you out there. So what sizes can I use? Well, there's a number of different sizes. You can go as low as a four gig, an eight gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, a 64 gig, a 128 gig, a 256 gig, or all the way up to a 512 gigabyte? I've never even heard of a 512 gigabyte. Well, let's talk about that a little bit more. Well, that depends on what type of RAM are you using. There's three types of modules that are compatible with the R650 server. You're gonna have ECC registered, known as an RDIM. You're gonna have load reduced, known as an LRDIM. And you're gonna have Intel Optane, or really now just called Optane Memory since Intel dropped that product line. But you're gonna have Optane Memory, and all three of these are gonna be compatible with the R650 server. So with ECC register, you can max out at two terabytes using 32 64 gigabyte modules at 3200 speed. And that's gonna be the max that you can do for ECC registered. Whereas with load reduce, you can actually get eight terabytes of RAM, which sounds crazy, it sounds more like storage, but you can get eight terabytes of RAM using 32 256 gigabyte modules. Now with Intel Optane, you can get all the way up to 12 terabytes of RAM. That's right, 12 terabytes of RAM, because what you can do here is out of the 32 slots, you can put in 16 Intel Optanes and then 16 load reduced. So for the 16 Intel Optanes, you can put in those 512 gigabyte modules that we were talking about. And then you can also throw in 16 of the 256 gigabyte load reduced. And that combo is gonna get you all the way up to 12 terabytes when you're using Intel Optane. So it's kind of crazy when you think about it. And if you are using that, I would love to hear what your application is because that is an insane amount of memory for the R650, but that is something that you can do with it as a whole. And I do wanna note for the Intel Optane, it is for the 2000, or excuse me, the 200 per persistent series, and that's gonna be 128 gigabyte DIMMs, uh, 256 and 512. All right, now that we know a little bit more about the uh, DIMM sizes, the DIMM speeds, the DIMM types, let's show you how to physically install them. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear. Be right back. All right, got my ESD gear on. We are safe to work on our machine and handle the parts. First thing I always like to do is lay out everything that you're gonna need. In this case, you will need just the modules. You do not need any extra screwdrivers or anything else, uh, no rags to clean, that's it. Um, and you do need to make sure the latch is set to unlock. That could require a screwdriver, but most times just set to unlock. Go ahead and pop it and lift the top and you are good to access your machine. So now that you are in, you will notice that there are two CPUs as we discussed in our CPU video. This is CPU one and this is CPU two. CPU one is gonna control 16 DIMM slots over here. So you see where these two white DIMMs touch, that is gonna be the dividing line between CPU one and CPU two. Now, an another good thing to note, cause you're gonna need to know the channels is if you are to look inside, it's going to show you all the DIMM slots and their locations for CPU one and CPU two. And this is right on the inside of your lid. So if you're confused and you're, you know, you can't watch this video, let's say on your phone or something inside your data center or whatever the case may be, there is a nice guide right here that'll show you exactly how to do it. 
and also Dell ha uh, Dell has labeled the motherboard. You won't be able to see it on camera, but on the back side over here, uh, all the DIMM slots are actually labeled on the PCB or the motherboard itself. So you can, you know, if you move these up and you look, you'll be able to find uh, all the DIMM slots and the labels for each individual one. And one of the things I will say is that the memory configurations can be a little bit confusing on this one. So a video like this will definitely help you to identify where to install the modules. But first thing I want to note is you'll notice that there's a white, black, white, black, white, black, and that's how it's going for each of the slots. White is the first slot in the memory channel. Black is the second slot in the memory channel. So that means there's two DIMM slots per channel. And that also means that there are eight channels per CPU. Uh, so you're getting a total of 16 channels to get you to your 32 modules. Um, so I wanted to point that out. And it's important because if you are installing, uh, let's just say 16 modules or eight modules or you know lesser modules than loading up all 32, you're never gonna really use the black DIMM slots. What you're gonna end up doing is loading all the white DIMM slots because you wanna load the start of a memory channel. You don't wanna overload one channel and having it doing more work than another channel. So you wanna have a nice even distribution across all your channels so that there's the same uh, configuration essentially across everything and a nice balanced performance. So, all right, let's go ahead and show you where the first slot is for CPU one. And again, this is where it gets a little bit wonky. Uh, a lot of times it would be on the outside or on the inside, the first one. So this is going to be A1, uh, which is a little confusing because it's not on the first one on either side. So just kind of right here in the middle, you're gonna have A1, and then you're gonna swing over here, and this one is going to be A2, and then you're gonna swing back around over here, and this one's going to be A3, and then you're gonna swing back around over here, and this is going to be A4. So again, uh, a little bit confusing, but you got one, two, three, four and then you're going to come back out over here and this is going to be a five on the outside and then you're going to swing back over here to the outside here and you're going to hit a six and then you're going to swing back around over here for a seven and then last but not least a eight so if you were using a uh, one cpu and eight dim slots the ideal configuration for you would be loading up these eight white slots that I have popped open here, and that would be the order in which you would do it. All right, so let's say we're running two CPUs and we wanna put in 16 DIMM slots. What do we wanna do? Well, you're gonna come over here and this is gonna be B1, and you're gonna swing around over here and you're gonna hit B2, and you're gonna swing back around over here, and then you're gonna hit B3, and then come back over here, and you're gonna hit B4, B5, B6, B7, B8. So that's gonna be the order that you're gonna put them in. And again, if you're using 16 DIMM slots with two CPUs, you're gonna use all the white DIMM slots before we ever start loading up the black DIMM slots. And the reason that, again, that we're gonna do that is just all about performance. You want a nice even distribution across all your channels so that one channel isn't doing, you know, overloaded doing extra work and one channel is doing nothing. Uh, so there's no bottlenecks, just a nice even distribution. All right, so now what I wanna show you uh, is how to actually install the modules. And I wanna show you a couple of tricks here. So first, there's a little notch right here in the middle of the leads. This notch is known as a key and the key is not perfectly centered. So it's one of the things I always tell people when they're doing their upgrades, they have to make sure they have the module lined up and facing the right way, or you could potentially damage uh, the leads or the motherboard itself because you could bust a little plastic piece in the dim slot and neither of these are an issue that you want. So I always just say uh, double check and make sure you line everything up perfectly. In this case, we wanna face it this way right here. And the other thing I always like to do uh, in advance, I like to pop open all of my tabs. Uh, this just helps me to, uh, when I'm going to install the modules, I'm not having to fight anything. Uh, so we're gonna start here at A1. And another key that I always like to point out is you'll notice that I've set the module down, uh, but the module is not fully inserted and you wanna see uh, the two tabs really cling to the side and pull it down and you'll hear these clicks those clicks gonna let you know that you've got your module inserted in here perfectly. Uh, and that's gonna let you know that everything's good to go. And it's really important because if it's off just a little bit, uh, it's hard to see on camera, but if I 
pull this back here just a little bit. That module is not fully in and it would actually register as not uh, seated properly. It'll tell you you have a bad dim and really it's just a seating issue. It's one of the things we always tell people as far as troubleshooting. If you have an issue and you think you have a bad dim or even a bad dim slot, rotate your modules around. A lot of times it's just a seating issue like this and that fixed it. So a lot of times when you're just rotating your modules around, it'll help you to just actually seat it properly. And it's really hard to see by eye if you're not really, really looking for it. So it's one of those things I always stress to people that it's a very, very common user error that we always tell people just rotate your modules around and just make sure that you have it seated properly. So now we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, A2 over here. And again, I like to pop all these open, makes it a little bit easier when I'm actually doing my installs. So we'll go ahead and just do the rest right now. So we're gonna hit A2 next. And then A3. A4. A5, A6, A7, and then A8. So now we're going to go ahead and make sure that all these are fully seated. That one didn't get in properly. So that's how you do it. So now that we've shown you uh, the, the tips and the tricks that you're going to really need and we've identified the dim slots, we're going to go ahead and fast forward. I'm going to install the first 16 to just show you those again and then I'm going to fast forward and show, show you all of them installed. All right, so I went ahead and got the uh, next eight installed. So we've got 16 total. And again, this would be the way that you install the first 16, all the whites. And again, I like to always look and make sure that all my tabs are fully, yep, nothing sticking out. Because if anything is sticking out and not fully inserted, uh, you'll see it. And I'll do it right now, just a very little one. And something like that, which is a very minor difference, and it's really hard to tell if you're not really looking for it, is the difference of this being installed and not being installed, and you even hear it clicking in there. And so again, I'm stressing the point, but it's the number one issue that we see when people are doing upgrades is just a improper seating uh, because they're either going too fast or they just didn't push hard enough because they're trying to be gentle with it, which I get because you don't want to damage your machine, but it's just one of the things I always like to stress the point. All right, so we've got 32 DIMMs installed. This is a wonderful machine. I love the R650. And if you're looking for a custom built R650 or any other Dell server for that matter, we build new and we build used. We'd love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. And we also do HPE, Super Micro, Cisco, IBM. We do custom builds for gaming rigs, for ASRock or Gigabyte. So if there's anything that you're looking for, do drop us a line.